Um, thank you very much. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. I want to talk about um, a very general topological method to solve uh, problems in maybe not only discrete geometry, but also other fields. Um, so it's probably the best if I start with an example. So what I'm, I was interested in, for example, was uh, inscribing problems um, and uh, circumscribing uh, also. Uh, namely uh, polytopes uh, in, into manifolds. So for example, Toeplitz's problem uh, is probably the most famous, um, famous problem in this area uh, since it's from uh, 1911, so it's 100 years old. He asked, uh, suppose you are given a Jordan curve, which is just uh, a continuous embedding uh, of a circle in the plane. Can you always find four points on this curve uh, that form a square like this? And it's still open. Uh, so it's proved, uh, it's proved for piecewise linear curves, for smooth enough curves. Um, and uh, many people proved a lot of different uh, special cases. Um, but for the general continuous, um, um, yeah, for general continuous curves, it's still open. But what's the topological method that I want to uh, show? Yeah, for C1 it's proved. Um, um, so the general topological method is uh, describe the solution set. And it's, it's not trivial. There exist, unfortunately, uh, um, some some um, wrong published uh, proofs for for this, or also for special <laughs> cases. So it, it's uh, it's trickier than it seems. Um, and good people also looked at this. So, for example, for example, Schneidelmann proved it uh, for I think a slightly weaker version of C2 curves. Um, so, what's the general topological method? Um, uh, think about your favorite research topic and try to describe the solution set as a pre-image. Yeah, so uh, what, what do I mean by this? Um, so here, um, the map would maybe be take as one to the four, which is the space of all quadrilaterals inscribed in this, um, in the curve, and measure whether such a quadrilateral is a square. How do you do this? Well, you can measure the four edges of the, square, uh, of the quadrilateral uh, and the two diagonals. And then there's a subvector space, which is of dimension two, where the first four components are the same and the uh, last two components are the same. And the pre-image of this two-dimensional vector space uh, will be the set of squares, except for some junk components. And these junk components are, exact, uh, are exactly the reason why this problem is difficult. And so the pre-image can now be um, measure topologically. Um, so here's a um, group acting on it, G. Uh, it's, a, it's a symmetry group of, of the square. Uh, it's acting here, uh, and in a, in a similar way, it's acting uh, on this space. Uh, so it's a G equivariant map. And uh, if the curve is smooth, then it can be shown that the free image um, has modulo this group uh, symmetry um, in uh, an odd number of solutions. So you will always find an odd number of squares, and this is basically how one proves it for a smooth case. Okay. Um, so let me give some uh, some other examples for problems that can be solved in this way. Um, the ham sandwich theorem. Um, any d masses in d-dimensional space can be bisected with a hyperplane in two equal parts uh, simultaneously. And uh, there are a lot of generalizations, and uh, I was also interested in this. Um, what else? Um, uh, how do I say this in easy words? Um, um, inter yeah, the intersection behavior. Uh, of convex sets. And uh, my work together with Pavle Blagojevic and Günter Ziegler was uh, um, 
a colored version of Zwerberg's theorem. Um, so th there was a, a problem raised by Barani, Furedi, and Lovas um, whether the Zwerberg theorem uh, can be has a colored generalization. What's Zwerberg's theorem? Well, it says how many points you need in d-dimensional space such that you can uh, partition the given point set into a certain number of points, say r uh, parts, say r parts, both convex halves <coughs> intersect. And there's a colored version of this, which looks as follows. Can you see this from there? Uh, so, okay, these are ten colored points. Uh, if you can't see it, these are ten colored points uh, in the in, in the plane, and. Uh, um, I conjecture that you can uh, partition them into four parts that are rainbow colored, like like this, this, oh, oops, uh, uh, and uh, oh, I think I made a mistake. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I think I really, yeah, now maybe like this, part and this is inside. So I, you can partition the, this uh, point set into four parts, such that they're convex hulls namely these uh, three triangles and this point, intersect. And um, we proved this in general, but only if the number of uh, parts, also in higher dimensions for uh, an arbitrary number of parts, and we said how many points you need and what color restrictions you have, uh, we proved this um, only if the number of parts is a prime, otherwise the topological method fails. And this is also an example uh, of a, of a general problem, how do you get the other way around? So if the general method, if, the, if, if one knows that the pre-image is somehow um, um, topologically more or less the same as the empty set uh, in, a, in, some precise, uh, um, in some precise way, um, how do you construct a counterexample? And this is uh, far from being known. So this is the first open case. It's not clear whether this always works. And uh, it seems like this is no counterexample. So uh, can you always, if you, if you color the 10 points in with uh, such that every color is at most used three times, can you always partition this uh, in four parts such that the convex halves intersect and such that every part is a rainbow colored part? And uh, why is this at all interesting? Because... The first open case is for 10 points, is that what you're saying? Uh, the, the, yeah, for two dimensions and 10 points okay. and four parts. And every color is uh, used at most uh, uh, three times. And why is this interesting? Because it um, it implies, uh, oh, I think uh, it maybe uh, it, it implies the second selection lemma, which is interesting for discrete geometers and um, people in um, uh, in computational complexity. So it uh, also gives um, the, uh, a good upper bound for the number of halving sets of an n uh, halving planes of an n set. But I don't want to go into detail because I want to talk about topological methods. Um, what else is known? Uh, it has applications in game theory. And I'm not an expert in game theory, but it would be very nice if uh, some of you is an expert in game theory, then I would like to talk to you. Because, for example, uh, um, Nash equilibria uh, in some two-player, in the easiest two-player games, uh, are proved using Brouwer's fixed-point theorem. And I, I think there's a lot more topology involved in there. I would be very interested in it. Um, what else? Uh, lower bounds uh, for the chromatic number of a graph are obtained by this. How, how, what, how does this relate uh, to topological methods? Well, um, uh, the chromatic number of a graph is just basically uh, a gra uh, given by graph homomorphisms. I mean, if I have a graph homomorphism from G to the complete graph Kn, then you know that this corresponds to an n coloring. Uh, so you want uh, to figure out which graph homomorphisms, or for which uh, n's does there exist a graph homomorphism from G to the complete graph Kn. Um, and uh, um, for this, there are obstructions obtained by, by topological methods. The, um, so Lovas observed that there's a so-called neighborhood complex, or more generally a home complex, associated to every graph uh, such that in a functorial way, way, such that graph homomorphisms give you uh, continuous maps preserving some symmetry um, between the associated neighborhood complexes. And if you can now show that such an equivariant map between the neighborhood complexes does not exist, uh, and for well he, he gave some, some connectivity bounds on the, uh, on the neighborhood complex, uh, then 
you know that if such an equivariant map between the neighborhood complexes does not exist, then you also don't find a, a, a graph homomorphism to, from G to the complete graph. And so you know that uh, the chromatic number must be larger than, than the number of vertices in this complete graph. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, um, yeah. Um, um, is there anything else? What time? Is, uh, how much more time do I have? Um, um, is there anything? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe maybe I'm uh, want to uh, maybe I should make more precise. So I have some some more things to talk about. Yeah, for example, uh, it takes too long. Um, so right now, um, I'm interested in parameterized versions of this uh, method. Um, which, uh, so during the last month, I found some uh, parameterized versions of the bosok ulam theorem and it's in some general, qu quite generalizations, um, which then somehow um, measure, for example, um, uh, for the skala tverberg theorem, how the solution, um, how the solutions, namely um, this intersection uh, or this, this, this partition, um, varies when you, when you perturb um, um, uh, the given point set, and yeah, this this can also be measured topologically, or mm, uh, yeah, same for the ham sandwich, same for for this so-called square peg problem. Um, okay, maybe I should stop.